All right, Shalom, Barak, Imla, Allah, Hayanawa, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, the God of the heavens and the earth, and of the 12 tribes of Israel, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You comprise the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the true chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh. Double honor, as always, them Yah to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who are the true teachers of Israel today and have labored faithfully in his truth. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, my daughter, house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make their calling of election sure, help and seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord. Mashiach Yahweh is at hand, and to the Akim and Akwathim who also listen, which are the brothers and sisters who listen and believe on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh To you, I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is the Brother Sagala coming back with a lesson through the Spirit, Lord willing. I don't want to rock design this lesson's edifying for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, which is through the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to jump right into it. You know, this lesson is coming from an article that you see on the screen from NBCNews.com. And the title says, Evictions Ramp Up in States as the Crown 99 Moratoriums come to an end so is this you know a staged event the plan you know what comes to an end we see the moratoriums coming you know fast and furious they're being lifted the moratorium is a freeze on evictions which at one time no state for over a year you know could uh, evict any of its tenants even if they were behind every month, even if they didn't make one payment. Some people went over a year and a half. Now, at one point, they didn't allow no states to do this. But now, at the last count that I've seen or heard, at least about a dozen or more states are now evicting people by way of this moratorium out of their homes. And we're going to read about one state and one city in, in particular, which is New York City. How this is on the rise. It says uh, housing advocates in New York City say they're already seeing a wave of tenants, often foreign born, people in low income neighborhoods being forced from their homes. And these people that are foreign born are a lot of you so-called Latinos, which is the northern tribe, you know, the nation of Israel, the northern kingdom. You know, the low income are you Negroes, West Indians and Haitians. You are a lot of you are in these low income neighborhoods. It says they're being forced from their homes. But now it says some tenants in New York City are coming home to find the locks on the doors changed or their personal belongings discarded. In extreme cases, they have experienced harassment. It says or assault as landlords try to force them to vacate. Housing advocates are sounding the alarm as they see an increase in unlawful evic evictions during the Crown 99 pandemic with the city's eviction moratorium set to expire Saturday. It says Satesh Nori said he and other advocates don't know how much worse it's going to get because the moratorium essentially zeroed out legal evictions. Nori, attorney in law of the Legal Aid Society, office in Queens represents people who have been evicted unlawfully in housing court. One of his clients lost his work as a result for the biotech company. When the demic began and making rent became difficult, eventually he had to stop paying, Nori said. The client whose last name is Solis, but didn't want his first name used for privacy reasons, has a civil case pending in the state Supreme Court against his landlord, Elizabeth Camello, and her son, Luis Acevedo. Solis alleges they harassed and threatened him and his wife and claims Acevedo assaulted him. A few days after the alleged assault, the locks were changed while he and his wife were gone, he said. Now, Let's get a little bit more of this. Uh, it says, there are at least 
two sides of any story. My client is confident that when the opportunity presents to when the opportunity to present the facts to the court, she will ultimately be vindicated, he said. Um, continuing on, let's see if we can get any more. Going into the moratorium, it says they're invisible in their trend in, in their transit, and the law doesn't recognize that. Nor he said the New York City Police Department does not like to get involved in these disputes. Instead, telling the tenants to fight it out in housing court, the NYPD did not respond to a request for comment. The department's patrol guy says um, uninformed officers should take one of three actions when there's probable cause for an unlawful eviction. Prepare a summons and serve it, make an arrest, or refer evicted tenants who can't secure temporary housing to the city's Department of Homeless Services. A lack of law enforcement help in such cases is a nationwide problem. So you also got the you also got the police force who's suffering, right? A nationwide problem. But you got a lot of police officers that's resigning and retiring. It says a lack of law enforcement help in such cases is a nationwide problem. And Bruce Mark, CEO and co-founder of the Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America, says the sheriffs are not supportive. So these landlords are basically able to do nothing or are basically able to, to do everything they want with impunity, which I, without being um, punished. It says after the federal moratorium prompted by the Demick ended in July 31st, marks that a large wave of tenants sought help with eviction cases, leading his organization to launch a team of economic justice advocates to deal specifically with illegal evictions. And they're, and they're not illegal because this is going through the court and the freeze, you know, is being lifted. But see, a lot of people didn't think that this was going to actually apply. You think that you're never going to have to, you know, pay for the place that you live in. If you've been living there for a year or more without paying any rent. And what kind of effects does that have on the economy? On all these owners, a lot of them are losing their homes because they, you know, a lot of them, first of all, don't own the homes outright. You know, and if they did and they didn't receive any money from their tenants, then they're losing money. Right. So now we see that there's an all out free fall here in Babylon. So what does all this mean to you, to you Israelites? I'm going to start in the book of 2nd Exodus 15. I'm just going to read in this chapter a few verses just going into this. You know, the, the, this housing moratorium, you know, the famine of food, you know, the, the demic that's going around, the pestilence, all the plagues of Egypt that's here. What, what does this mean for you? This is the book of 2nd Exodus 15. In verse 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, which the people of the Most High are the Israelites. Right? Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. The Lord said, Speak these words to his people, whether they hear or whether they forbear. The scriptures also tell us, you know, what if some did not believe? You know, so your, the lack of faith is not going to change prophecy, ultimately. Second Andrews 15 and 1, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which the words of prophecy tell us that we are in the last days. We're telling our people that, you know, these um, plagues are going to continue. These terrible times, these evil times, these bad days are coming. The time of Jacob's trouble, race wars, civil unrest, civil war, famine of food, great death and destruction, lawlessness. All these things are prophecy, which is the time of great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. So th 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 these are the prophecies we're telling our people about. But by and large, they don't want to hear them. They don't want to take heed. They don't care. But see, these words were only intended to be to and for the elect anyway. You know, those that the Lord has given eyes to see and ears to hear. It says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So these words are the words of the Most High. Yahweh Shemir Rashad, the Most High and his son. 
Verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true, meaning they're going to come to pass. The Lord said his word would not come back unto him void, and that he would confirm the words of his prophets, the words of his messengers. He was going to confirm them. Verse 3, fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of, of them trouble thee that speak against thee. The incredulity is a lack of faith. So although many of our people don't believe, the believers don't let the lack of faith, that incredulity, keep them from continuing to serve the Lord and continue, you know, to grow in the faith. The scripture tells that faith will flourish in the last days and faith is flourishing. So it doesn't matter about those who, who don't believe. The scriptures also tell us in Second um, Thessalonians, the second chapter, that many many would go, would die because they they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. The love of the truth is what's going to lead to the salvation. But many are going to die because they received not the love of the truth, because they had that incredulity. It's being spoken of here in Second Corinthians fifteen and three, verse four. For all the unfaithful, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all the non-believers are going to die because of their, their lack of faith, their lack of belief. Because the scriptures tell you, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Speaking of Yahweh by Shemir Shah. Right? Verse 5, 2 Ezra 15 and 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. And this is one of those plagues. This housing moratorium. A lot of jakes, you know, this is affecting you Israelites most heavily. A lot of you Israelites are, are going homeless. And that's part of these plagues. I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So that's what's coming, and that's what's here, and that's what's to come. You know, that, that that's going to be multiplied and brought more, more swiftly, you know, as we continue to go in further into the time of Jacob's trouble, that great tribulation. Verse 6, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So all you Jakes has been living wickedly and, and, and not repenting and, and not um, turning back to the Lord. All those that have not made inquisition of the Lord, have not inquired and, and have not, you know, hearkened unto the words of the prophets, which are the words of, of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yom You know, all those hurtful works, all the wickedness you've done, you're going to have to pay for. Right? You're going to be charged with your sins, ultimately. Verse 7, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching the wickedness. For all you Jakes that continue in that way, the Lord is going to bring judgment on you. That's why he said he's not going to hold his tongue no more, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Because the scriptures tell us, you know, that um, use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So a lot of our people wickedly exercise themselves in the imaginations of their heart, the lust of the flesh, living in the, they're living the way that they want to live, you know, being contrary to the Most High. They're in all forms of different religions. They're comedic, right? In the black unconscious community, you know, they're self-made, self-willed. They're Christians, all different forms, Christians, which Presbyterians, Pentecostals, um, holiness, Baptists, Seven Day Adventists, Catholics, right? Some of them are atheists, you know, in all forms of, of beliefs, ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. So all these things that they wickedly exercise themselves in. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, which is the, the believers, you know, the elect, and the souls of the just complain continually. Just are the elect. Those are the ones who the Lord justify when you read in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. It says, the souls of the just, the Lord is here in the prayers of the righteous, the Bible says. Second Ezra 15 and 9, and therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them. You're going to avenge who? The elect. The Lord said he will surely avenge them. This is Luke 18. The Lord said, I will surely avenge them. You're going to surely avenge the elect. Luke 18 and 7. And it reads, And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Those are the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, which are the believers. Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. 
Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he, shall he find faith on the earth? Showing you that few men are going to believe in these last days. The elect, you know, is known as a remnant. You know, those remaining after a great slaughter, which is a small number compared to the masses of Israelites that's out here. So the Lord said he's going to, he's going to avenge them speedily, the believers. Verse 10, 2 Ezra 15 and 10, Behold, my people, speaking of the Israelites, is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And this lines up when you go into the book of Isaiah. It says, Lord says, people is led as a flock to the slaughter, right? So the Israelites are led as a flock to the slaughter. It says the same thing in Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Isaiah 65, um, and, and 12, Isaiah 65 and 12, it says, Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, and the Lord is calling out through his men, he's calling out, right? He's calling out by way of the prophets. Because when I called, ye did not answer. But many of our people, they, they don't want to hear what the Lord got to say. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes. They continued on in their wicked ways. They didn't want to receive reproof and correction. They didn't want to, you know, come back to being an Israelite, come back to their heritage. It wasn't good enough for them. And did choose that wherein I delighted not. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power, behold, my servant shall eat and ye shall be hungry. Two thirds. Behold, my servant shall drink, which is the elect, but ye shall be thirsty. Two thirds. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You shall be ashamed, which is the two thirds. Behold, my servants, which is the elect, shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and ye shall howl for vexation of spirit. You're going to be vexed, you know, sorely vexed in the spirit for not choosing to come back to Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. So let's read that again. Going back to 2 Ezra 15 and 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. So a lot of you jakes is about to get destroyed. It says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Speaking of the elect, the Lord's not going to leave the elect here. Verse 11, but I will bring them, speaking of the elect, with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So everything's being done all over again. There's nothing new under the sun. It says, and I will destroy all the land thereof. All of Babylon is going to be destroyed. New Egypt, right? Spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The land of the north, all these names are names in the Bible that refers to America. For all you people who don't who don't believe that America is found in the scriptures, it is. But you got to be spiritual to understand it. Verse 12, Egypt shall mourn. This place is going through starting the process of great mourning. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon us. This place is being destroyed. And this is the punishment of the Most High. So no one can offset this or... or do anything about this, right? Verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn, where their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail with the fearful consolation. Ultimately, it's going to be the missiles going to destroy this place. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So the great destruction and death is coming to the world. Verse 15. For the sword and the destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. This is, this is race wars. And swords in their hands, which the modern day sword is the gun. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men to overthrow the government and invading one another. You know, murder. Right? Murder and death. Killing. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes, which are their, the people in, in positions of power. And it says, in the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So people are going to do whatever they want to do in these last days. And straight hell breaks loose. For you people that trust in the shadow of Egypt, you know, you're not going to have no cover. Because the Bible says your trust in Egypt shall be your shame and shall lead to your confusion. Verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, meaning these cities are going to be cut off. Martial law, etc. Verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So it says because of their pride. Right? The Lord said that Esau was most proud. It says, 
That's why a lot of our people are following Esau and his ways. So these cities in Babylon and around the world are going to be troubled. You know, and the houses are going to be destroyed. And people are going to be afraid, it says. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. This is a doggy -e dog world. People are going to really see that. But shall destroy their houses with the sword, with the gun, death, killing, and spoil their goods because people are going to be looking for food. You know, any any precious commodities, to, you know, the things that matter the most, food, water, shelter. It says, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. We're in a time of great tribulation, right? It says, for lack of bread and great tribulation. That's going to be the reason why these things are going to be going on. You know, one of the, you know, the major reasons why, which are ultimately is the plagues of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh that he promised he would bring to the earth. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that's what we do when we come out, you know, and teach this word and do these epistles and relentlessly, you know, push this truth. Right? The Lord said, give him no rest day nor night till he establish and make Jerusalem a praise in the earth again. Acts 14 and 22. So we're confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. The believers, starting with the, the, the brethren, 144,000 on down to the believers that make up the body of Mashiach. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. So it's going to be through much tribulation, as we read here in 2nd Ezra, you know, 15 and verse um, 19, the latter half, it says, because of lack of bread and for great tribulation, these things are going to happen. So it's going to be through much tribulation that we're going to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Let's see if I can get another one. Through much tribulation. Yep. First Peter 4 and 18, it says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, which means barely, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So the righteous are going to scarcely, barely make it out of here, right? At the last trump and the twinkling of an eye. So all the rest of these jakes are going to be destroyed. They're going to be left here to be missile food. The righteous are going to barely make it out of here. So a lot of you jakes are going to burn, man, because, you know, you don't believe that this is real. You think that you got enough time, you know, to some, to some somehow evade or elude Yahweh Hashem Yahweh You think that you can get away from the judgment of the Most High, right? This is the book of Sirach. And you're going to consider these words perfectly. The Lord said, you know, um, that in the... Our people will be willing in the day of thy power, right? This is the book of Sirach 5. Let me get a few out of here. We'll, we'll close it out. Sirach 5 and 1. It says, set not thy heart upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. You shouldn't be in the spirit of thinking that everything's going to be okay because you got a little money or, or a good job or certain credentials or 401k, Right? Or any of these things, comfort creature items, a big house, equity, a business that you own. The Lord could take that all in, in, in a matter of seconds. Verse 2, follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways that are of thy heart. So the scriptures tell us, Proverbs 3 and 5, you know, not to follow your, your own heart. You know, verse 3. And say not who shall control me for my works, for the Lord will surely avenge thy pride. The most high hates pride. Verse 4, say not I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering, he will in no wise let thee go. So all you jakes that think that you straddling the fence or think that you got over on, on Yahweh Bashim Yabashai, because you heard the truth or whatever the case may be, you feel like, no, I don't gotta do that. I want to live the way I want to live. Just know. The Lord said he will in no wise let thee go. He ain't going to let you escape. Verse 5, concerning propitiation, which Yahweh Shai is that sacrifice, that atonement, that propitiation for our sins, be not without fear to add sin to sin. And say not his mercy is great. 
He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation, which is his righteous anger, resteth upon sinners. Verse seven, those that won't repent. Because when you read the scriptures to tell you the Lord will give repentance to his sons and daughters. Right? For those that for those that will repent. Verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, which a lot of our people, you know, continue to do. A tarrying and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. The scriptures say the Lord's coming as a thief of the night. So suddenly it says, shall the wrath come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So you Jakes, you know, are in a bad way out here. You don't have no covering. You wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked. You know, pertaining to Revelation 3 and 17. Because you are without the truth. So you have no covering. You have no cloak. You know, you have no safe haven. You have no strong tower. So with that, I hope that was edifying to the hopeful elect. Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh, Hakwadash. Double honor. Them Yad is always to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, my double daughter, house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make the call of election sure. Help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel. And to the Akim and Akwafim, the brothers and sisters who listen and believe on Yahweh Shimei Shai, to you I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect.